Hello, my favorite bookaholics. Today, my dear fellows, we have a special guest to talk about a taboo dilemma. Drums, please. Detectives or lover stories? Samaria, tell us, are you a detectives or lovers, girl? I am a 100% detectives. Oh, wrong answer for your peers here. Carol, I think we brought the wrong guest. Wait, let's give her a chance. So tell us, Maria, why are you so attached to detective stories? It's the suspense and the adrenaline are filling my veins every time I read a detective's book. And what about the drama and all the cliché, the spiciness and the secrets the lovers hide? Yes, that is very cute and all of that, but it's just fantasy and nothing can take away the feeling I have every time I am about to find out who is the guilty one. So, you are telling me you prefer that over the feeling of your heart beating so fast that you think that he's going to explode? And what about how nervous you feel when you fear that a couple isn't going to end up together? Yes, but nothing can beat the surprise you get every time you find out who the real killer is and all the plan you are making in your head to find out who the murderer is. Enemies to lovers? Friends to lovers? Fake relationships? Does it make you feel anything at all? I get it, but after all this argument I found out that we have something in common. We find attra attractive the nerves we feel while reading a book. You are so right. Girl, let's make a deal. You recommend us a book and the other way around. <laughs> I choose my top one, Evil Under the Sun by Agatha Christie. Even though I have lots of books to recommend you, I have to go with the trilogy dimly. Did I mention I love you by Estel Muscaim? So I have to go with Begin Again by Mona Caston. I guess you see us next week, bookaholics. Thank you, Maria, for this amazing argument. The pleasure was all mine. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our weekly podcast. Popcorn. In line. Here are your favorite hosts, Corsense. Franjinha. And Carlota. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about stereotypes. So, guys, how do you think stereotypes can hold someone back? People can be very disrespectful, uh, like, for example, we the Indian people, um, their food is very smelly and that can borrow people, uh, but it's stupid. Now that you spoke about it, I remember seeing a story where someone denied renting a house to an Indian people because they thought the food was too smelly and it could like be in the house for too long and make it unbearable to other people that lived in the house. Oh, they did that. That's so unfair and rude. Do you think that happens with jobs? I think it does, but it shouldn't. Although a lot of people want to bring multiculturalism into their companies and their fam uh, friend circle, for example, a lot of people don't want to have anything to do with people from other cultures and can be uh, extremely rude, as we said before, and just maintain their company all white or all Portuguese in if you're in Portugal, for example, which isn't good because we are just excluding people and not giving them opportunities based on their culture. Do you think that uh, that can affect future generations? Of course it can. Um, we should teach them to be respectful and tolerant and instead of that we are teaching them to be racist, racist and disrespectful. I have to agree and disagree with you because yes a lot of people are teaching the wrong values to the next generation. I think a lot of people are making a true effort to make uh, society and youth so much more respectful and so much more kind than they have been in the past. So that's the end of the So that's the end of of today's episode. Uh I hope that you like it. Uh follow us on Spotify and other social media. Playing on Apple Podcast. <laughs> What up, what up guys, here is the Tushes again. And today, we are here to do a Q&A. So, let's get into it. First question is from Billie Jean. 
Can English help you get a job? Being able to speak in English will help you to get a job in the easiest way. When you speak in English, you are able to look for jobs outside of your home country, which increases the size of your job market dramatically. When job prospects are challenging in your country, the ability to look outside of your borders is very helpful. The second question is from Joanna Hope. And she said, Will English give you access to multiple cultures? Good knowledge of English will allow you to access films, music and literature from hundreds of countries around the globe. Not to mention the fact that numerous looks from across the world are translated into English. The next question is from Jeremy Muscow. And he asks, do you think English will help you meet new people? So, English is the official language of 53 countries and is used as a lingua franca by people from all around the world. So, English can help you have a conversation with people from all over the world. So, for the last question, we have the real Slam Shady. Will the real Slam Shady please stand up? And the question is, is English the new language of the internet? I do think English is the new language of the internet. English is a particularly important language online with more than half the content on the internet written in English. As well as this, some of the world's largest tech companies are based in English speaking. I hope you found this episode useful. Goodbye, goodbye. Wait for the next episode and touch us out. Welcome to Impact of Games in Society. It's with all the pleasure and honor that I announce a teenager who seems to be confident and brave. Otherwise, he wouldn't be here. Applause for Ricard Chia. Hello, hello everybody. So I'm here today to talk about my addiction on video games. Usually I spend 15 hours playing games every day. I don't really care about school and the principal often sends a lot of emails to my parents to complain about my bad behaviors. Oh, I think I understood. It's your lucky day because I have a solution for you. Applause for João Martin. Hello everybody, I was exactly like Ricardo. Fortunately, I surpassed my addiction. I had realized that school was more important than video games. At the start, it was difficult not playing games, but through efforts, I was able to stop. I hope that you can learn from my experience. Thank you. I will put all my effort into the school and make my parents proud. I hope that this podcast has motivated you. Hope you enjoyed. See you next week. Uh, hello everyone. My name is João. Welcome to the first episode of my podcast. Today we are going to talk about stereotypes. And for that, I have Barbara and Rita here with me. Hi. Hello. So, as everyone must know, Stereotypes is a widely held, simplified and essentialist belief about a specific country or community in this case. However, the perception of stereotypes can be different for everyone, am I right? Yeah, I agree with you, because people create these stereotypes according to their own experiences and beliefs. And since we all have different lives, we will have different perceptions of each country as well. For example, I went to Italy not long ago. And before I got there, I thought I would see everyone eating pizza everywhere because uh, that's a stereotype that I had. But once I got there, I realized I was wrong. Um, however, I created stereotypes uh, based on things I was told to and also things I would see in shows and media and all of that. So yeah, these are one of the ways stereotypes can be created. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, um, for example, someone who lives in Africa, like South Africa and so on, um, won't have the same stereotypes about Angola as someone that li lives in the United States, for example. Like, Angola is not a desert and we, people don't, you know, go to school riding a giraffe or something like that. So it really does depend on where they live, you know, and their experiences and all that. 
Uh, yes, I totally agree with both of you. Uh, one stereotype about uh, French people is that they smoke a lot. Uh, personally, when I went to France, uh, I saw a lot of people smoking on the streets, but it wasn't every single people that I saw. Uh, and that is another of the many stereotypes that are in the world. So that's it for today. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Hi guys, I'm Elena. And I'm Rafael. Welcome to another episode of our podcast, Teen Talk. And today we're going to talk about our favorite movie gender and which movies we like the most. So, my favorite movie gender are romance and drama, and yours? My favorite movie gender are action and horror, because I like the sensation of adventure, how people grow as a human being, see people give up what they are, and you see that kind of thing in action. Horror, you see the people struggling and face danger and fear. And you? I like romance and drama because a good love story is always something that captivates me. And when there's drama in there, it's even better. Do you have a favorite movie? I don't really have one. What about you? Um, I really like classics, and my favorite one is A Walk to Remember. It is a movie inspired in a Nicholas Sparks book, which is a writer that I really like too. Never watched it, but seems good or interesting. Uh, and that's it for our weekly podcast. Thank you for watching our podcast. And see you guys next week. Hello, welcome back to my podcast. Today I brought a special guest to talk to you about the importance of the English language and why we should all learn it. Hello, I'm Maria. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure to talk about such an important subject and help you approach it on the podcast. You are always welcome. In today's world, multilingualism is becoming more and more important. In addition to opening up employment opportunities, being able to speak a foreign language helps to make a real connection with people and to know more about diverse culture, places and lifestyles. Yes, I agree. The more proficient you are, the better you can express yourself. Whether it's for personal or professional reasons, understanding the importance of English will help you reach your goals. Here are a few reasons why you should keep learning and practicing your English language skills. First of all, English is the language of international communication. Although English is not the most spoken language in the world, it is the official language in 53 countries and is spoken as the first language by around 400 million people worldwide. But that's not all. It is also the most common second language in the world. Therefore, it is highly likely that if you meet someone from another country, we will both be able to speak in English. It gives you an open door to the world and helps you communicate with global citizens. Also, English gives access to more entertainment and more access to the internet. Nowadays, many films, TV shows and music are published and produced in English. By understanding English, you won't need translation and subtitles anymore. By access accessing these media, you will also continuously improve your English, listening and reading skills. English is currently the language of the internet. About half of the world's most visited websites are displayed in English. Therefore, learning this language gives you access to over half of the content of the internet, which might not be available otherwise. Whether it is for fun or for work, if you understand English, you will be able to exchange information with many more people online and use many more materials. English also makes it easier to travel. As I lighted before, since English is spoken as a first language in 53 countries and as a second language in over 118 countries, learning the language makes it much easier to travel anywhere. Indeed, airport announcements, emergency information and street signs are often available in English. It goes without saying that when traveling to a country where you don't speak the language, you are practically guaranteed to find someone who understands at least some English. Another interesting fact is that English can actually make you smarter. Learning a foreign language enhances your cognitive and analytical abilities. Learning a new language can be difficult and it involves a lot of mental exercises. On an individual level, it improves personality and increases sense of self-worth. In simple words, learning a foreign language makes the brain stronger and more versatile. Learning English is not only useful, but it also gives a lot of satisfaction and making progress will make you feel great. We hope you enjoyed listening and I will see you next week. Goodbye.